Hi guys, Pete here, N6QW, and I want to cover some of the fine points of the final installation of the Let's Build Something single sideband transceiver and kind of go over some of the circuit elements and uh, just where they're all located. I, I of course, uh, used an approach uh, of a two foot by two foot breadboard uh, to house all the uh, various components and uh, you can see them spread out before you and I'm going to just take a little quick tour here this is the audio amplifier and one change we made in part two is to swap out the 2N3904 and 2N3906 and uh, are using a TIP31 uh, for the 2N3904 and a TIP32 for the 2N3906 uh, this lets you have a lot more uh, oomph out of the audio amplifier without distortion and uh, we'll tune this up in a bit and you can um, you can listen to it uh, you can see the detail boards on the let's build something uh, website and just go to my call in 6QW find JES systems find the link to the let's build something uh, <clears throat> here's the audio amplifier uh, knob and you can hear the background noise go up and down we just used a couple of pieces of PC board to make a little right angle bracket screwed into the board Use the national uh, type uh, HRO dial here for the uh, uh, for the um, amplifier knob, and uh, has a little dial uh, on the outside. That tells us a 10. So this is the audio amplifier. This is the double balanced mixer, and right here is a little jumper pin that uh, takes our 39 ohm resistor, and uh, we have that hooked up in parallel with a uh, a, a double pull double throw switch. So I can uh, key the transmitter and push, push the talk at the same time. That closes the 39 ohm to ground, and uh, that puts the transmitter in a, in a tune mode. This is the double balance mixture. This is the microphone amplifier right here. And of note, the, the output of the microphone amplifier goes connects to the same place uh, where the input to the audio amplifier. So they're essentially in parallel, but there are a couple of coupling capacitors that isolate them. Besides, these are never turned on at the same time except for testing the microphone amplifier. So you don't have to worry about interaction. Here we have the, uh, the bilateral amplifier stage, uh, the 2N3904, 2N3904, 3906, 2N3904, 3906 over here. Here's our homebrew filter underneath here, but I have since put in a 9 megahertz filter, and you'll see some information on that on the uh, on the website. I just wanted to cycle through some commercial filters and see how this works. Over here is the uh, digital display for uh, the uh, Arduino driven uh, SI5351. This little board right here is the uh, SI5351 and a Pro Mini, uh, an Arduino Pro Mini. It's a pretty small board. Right back here is the double balance uh, mixer that's used for the receive mixer and transmit mixer. And here's the booster amplifier coming out of the SI5351 to boost the signal levels. If you look on the website, you'll see a diode ring mixer like this that's in a diode ring. And then you see a crisscross form of it right here. And if you look on the website, you'll see how these two circuits are equivalent. You're going to say that's not the same as that, but it is. It's just the way in which the thing is wired up. And there's a graphic on the website that shows you how to do that. This right here is the uh, booster amplifier for the BFO, for the SI5351. It's the same circuit as this, only I just built it on an open uh, circuit board here because it's something I had. Each one of these, the gain level is individually adjustable. Here's a little 100 ohm pot here, and there's a 100 ohm pot right here. Let you set the gains precisely for the VFO and BFO so that you have the right drive level. If you do not have enough drive into the product detector balance mixer, you will not be able to unbalance the carrier, not be able to get a tune up uh, signal. Okay, so once the signal comes out of this receiver transmit mixer, it then goes into the bandpass filter, which is back here, which is the 42IF123IF transformers. Now, what you're going to find, and I, I didn't think this was so much of a concern because this is primarily going to be used as a single sideband transceiver, you'll find that these transformers don't quite tune all of 40 meters. So you get them peaked, and they'll peak on one portion of the band or the other. Uh, there is an alternative circuit diagram on the website that shows you how to build this out of discrete components. But this, this uses three capacitors and the transformers, which unfortunately are no longer available. But right now I have it peaked up for the phone band. So this is both used on transmit and receive. We next uh, proceed to the bi-directional stage, 
which has a 2N3904 and a 2N3904 amplifier. One is used on transmit, one is used on receive. And then uh, these three relays here enable you to do the transceive operation. So essentially on receive, <coughs> the signal from the TR relay way back here goes into a booster amplifier. And this booster amplifier goes through this bidirectional amp. And so the signal is amplified twice. There's pots on both of these to adjust the signal level gain. The output on the transmit side goes into the uh, pre-driver driver stage, which is the 2N3904 and the 2N3866. And then the final amplifier here is the IRF510 with a little bias pot. This is the low-pass filter that is used. It's connected permanently to the IRF510. This meter was not in the design, but we mentioned that you should put a, a milliamp meter in the drain lead of the IRF510 so you can set the bias. And right now, I have that bias, uh, well, it's picking up my voice. I have the bias set for about, uh, about uh, 75, 80 milliamps. And you can see even here, I'm uh, starting to modulate it, and here's the RF output. So uh, when you speak into the microphone, uh, this thing will go way up. This is November 6, uh, Quebec Whiskey, testing uh, homebrew QRP uh, single sideband transceiver. So you see the RF output here, and you see the current in the uh, drain lead of the IRF 510. <clears throat> it is a basic, simple design, um, and it allows for a lot of experimentation. You can change some of the individual boards if you don't like these uh, hand wound, handmade uh, balance mixers. You can put a package SBL1 in here. You can put the pot on the SBL1 on pins 5 and 6. You can use a packaged SBL1 here in, in lieu of this uh, handmade uh, a double balance mixer and that would reduce the size pretty dramatically. You can try putting other filters in here. All you need to do is change the, uh, the frequency information in the Arduino sketch to accommodate the filter. So you could really get this uh, compressed down uh, pretty small. Uh, just running the pre-driver and driver stage back here puts out about 400 milliwatts. And initially I had the low-pass filter connected to that and the antenna. And I, talked to, I made about a dozen contacts in three states just using the, the driver stage. So if you want to have some fun and you really want to challenge yourself. And I don't have an exotic antenna. I'm using a 20 meter extended double zep. Uh, that the apex in inverted V fashion apex is up only 26 feet. I have a really poor antenna and you can make lots of contacts with that. So uh, let's uh, let's tune this around. Um, and you can step the uh, VFO so you can either tune it in kilohertz, 100 hertz, or 10 hertz. And with the, uh, with the software that's up on the sketch, you'll see, right here you can't see, but it says lower sideband. If I put the switch in here, it'll go, it can switch to automatically to upper sideband. And so this has potential for use as a PSK transceiver, uh, should you want to add that, or you want to add other bands, or you want upper sideband functionality. That's upper sideband at the high end. I don't have the switch in here, but you could hear that. Uh, you could be able to switch that over to upper sideband. There you go. There's the audio amplifier stage. Okay, uh, we're having a little problem there with the um, <clears throat> with showing output, but uh, here's the tune function, and notice the uh, RF output here, and we just about pin the meter, so we're drawing more than 500 mils on that uh, amplifier, and you can see uh, we're hitting, and actually I'm looking at the uh, RF output meter, and I'm hitting 10 watts, 10 watts here in tune, and uh, there we are at about 100 mils uh, of uh, well, about 80 mils, about 80 mils on bias. And there it is. QRZ, this is uh, November 6, uh, Quebec Whiskey, Norway 6, Queen Willie. Checking the frequency, see if the frequency is occupied. Hello, CQ, CQ on 40, November 6, uh, Quebec Whiskey calling, Norway 6, uh, Queen Willie. Hello, CQ, CQ 40 meters, N6QW calling and bye for any call. Five 
Ben's a call. Shut up, Ben. Let's, let's move up five. Uh, great, this is uh, November 6, uh, Quebec Whiskey. Could I get a signal report, please? November 6, Quebec Whiskey. Yes, sir. Uh, kilowatt 6, Quebec Lima Zulu. You got Ray on this end. We're down here in Moreno Valley. Uh, beautiful signal. I think you're a good 5-9, uh, maybe over into the red there. Go ahead. Yeah, very good. I think it's Ray. This is November 6, uh, Quebec Whiskey. My name is Pete, uh, Pop Echo Tango Echo. And I'm uh, testing out a uh, homebrew uh, QRP transceiver. And nice to see we're making it to the Moreno Valley. We're, um, we're here in New Newberry Park, South Ventura County. And uh, we're just uh, testing out a transceiver here. Make sure <laughs> make sure I got all the wires connected right. But a uh, beautiful day here in Newberry Park. Uh, I was out working a little bit and I said, it's too hot to work. Time to go play radio. This is N6QW. Okay, Pete. Oh, very good. Yeah, you're 5'9". Good 5'9". And Jim... Uh... What kind of a signal do you have, Elmy? Well, happy Thursday, Pete. K6 Whiskey Echo Zulu. I'm over here by Victorville. I got you at an S5 over here. Oh, great. K6 uh, Whiskey Echo Zulu, November 6, uh, Quebec Whiskey. Well, uh, you're both coming in here fine business uh, here on uh, 40 meters uh, for me. And as I said, it's a homebrew transceiver. It's on a breadboard. And uh, boy, you just touch one thing and <laughs> you're liable to put things out of kilter. Thank you for allowing me to uh, to interrupt you there, and thank you very much for the signal report. I do appreciate it. We're uh, we're trying to finish this thing up so that uh, everything gets nailed down. And uh, with that, I'll say my seven threes, and I do appreciate the signal report. This is November six, uh, Quebec whiskey. Okay, Pete, very good. Yeah, you've got it done right, and you're definitely an S nine here, no problem at all. All right, sir, take care. K six QLs at seven threes. Have a fun day, Pete. Yeah, keep playing with.